In our previous problem that we solved, we were talking about the coefficient of static friction. Now we have something that is actually moving, and so we're going to be thinking about a problem using the coefficient of kinetic friction. So we have a hockey puck <laughs> represented by this here, and it's given an initial speed of 20 meters per second on a frozen pond. The puck remains on the ice and it slides a distance of 120 meters and it eventually slows down and comes to rest. Final velocity is zero meters per second. We're going to determine the coefficient of kinetic friction between the puck and the ice with this information. So I've got all of my knowns here. Um, I wrote down here the distance that we slide is 120 meters, so that would be x final minus x initial is 120 meters. Sometimes we call that delta x. So free body diagram, first step. We've got the normal force perpendicular to the surface that we're sliding across. We've got the weight of the object downward. Uh, weight is equal to mass times gravity. And we have the kinetic friction force. And the kinetic friction force is always going to be opposite the direction of motion. Your friction forces are always opposite your direction of motion. So if we're moving this way, then my kinetic friction force is pointing in the opposite direction. And at no point did I tell you the mass of this object. We don't need to know it because we're going to solve, when we solve the problems, we're going to see that the mass is going to cancel out of the equations. Okay, so in order to solve this problem, we're given an initial velocity, a final velocity, a distance over which we travel. We've got to find the, the coefficient of kinetic friction. This information right here sounds a lot like our kinematic equations, right? So what we're going to do is we're going to use our kinematic equations to solve for the acceleration or deceleration of our puck across the pond, and then we can use that acceleration in F equals ma in order to help us find the coefficient of kinetic friction. So our first step is going to solve for the acceleration. So step one, acceleration. So we look for an equation of kinematic motion that will help us solve for acceleration when we know that we've got velocities and, and distances. So I'm going to use this equation here. V final squared minus our V initial squared is equal to 2 times the acceleration times X final minus X initial. Okay? Our final, ex our final velocity is going to be 0. I want to solve this for acceleration. So minus initial velocity squared divided by, I've got to divide the right-hand side by 2 and x minus x naught. So here we're going to have that minus v naught squared over 2 times x minus x initial is equal to our acceleration. So I divided both sides by 2 times x minus x naught. So our acceleration will equal negative our initial velocity squared 20 meters per second squared all over 2 times the distance over which we slid 120 meters. So our acceleration is equal to oh, here minus 1.67 meters per second squared negative acceleration because we're slowing down, we're decelerating. So now to find the coefficient of kinetic friction, we're going to use this acceleration and Newton's second law. We've got to solve Newton's second law in both the x component and the y component. The y component of Newton's second law is going to give us the normal force of our block. We need that for our kinetic friction. Okay, so um, our acceleration in the y direction, there is no acceleration in the y direction, so that's zero. And in the y direction, we've got our force of the normal force upwards. We've got the normal force minus the weight of our object acting down, minus mg. So the normal force in this case is just mass times gravity. The normal force will always just equal the mass times gravity if you're on a flat surface. The normal force will always equal to the weight of the object if you're on a flat surface. 
So now let's look at our Newton's second law for the x direction. So in the x direction, the only force we have acting is our kinetic friction force, and it's in the opposite of the direction of motion. So we've got minus our kinetic friction force equals our mass times the acceleration. Okay, so our uh, friction force is always going to be the coefficient of friction, in this case the coefficient of kinetic friction, times the normal force equals mass times acceleration. Our normal force is mg, so this is minus coefficient of kinetic friction, mg equals ma. Oh, there we go. We're solving for the coefficient of kinetic friction, so I'm going to divide both sides by a minus g. Okay. That gets rid of this minus sign on this side, and also cancels out my g here. So then I have mu k is equal to a over g, and this whole thing is negative. Okay. So that is equal to negative my acceleration, which was minus 1.67 meters per second squared, and then we divide it by our 9.8 meters per second squared. So we find that our coefficient of kinetic friction is equal to 0. 1, 7. Usually your coefficient of frictions are always going to be less than 1. So we could solve this problem without even knowing the mass of our object. And that's another reason why we would always try to solve our equations algebraically first. Because if you don't do that, you're not going to have anything to plug in for mass anyway whenever you're working through these problems.